Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. My name is Alex. That's Kirby over there. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Help us get to that 1,000 subscriber mark. The topic for today is emotions and money. Okay, so Kirby, I mean, I understand this topic, but what would you what would you say about this? Uh, emotions and money. Uh, I'm just going to cut to the chase. I mean, you already let the cut out the bag that uh, on camera, uh, I'm nicer than real life. So I'll just say it like I'll say it to somebody that's not on camera. Uh, emotions and the bank account have a correlation. Uh, and it has a correlation of the more emotional you are, I don't care what, you know, game you try to, you know, face you try to put on in public. The more emotional you are, the lower your bank account sits. And the reason why is because Money itself, in general, is an emotional object. Currency is just the emotional object. It's why Warren Buffett had to say, buy when it's blood in the streets or buy when everybody else is fearful. When they're fearful, they're selling off their stocks because they're scared they're going to lose money. And the people that thinking logically is, okay, they're selling this stuff at a discounted price, so I'll buy it now and whether the storm for it to go up. It's the reason why people, if you know, you know, you got family members and you got an auntie or uncle that's highly emotional, they're always helping people, but they always don't have no money to help themselves. And it's a correlation with that. And like I said, and I started off with saying, no matter what face you put on, I know some of the people, I know some people that you would think they'll, they could walk through walls, you know, they they uh chew on two by fours for breakfast. But when it comes to somebody giving them a sob story, or they, you know, they hear something, you know, of course they don't, you know, break it out as you know big news because they want to, you know, keep that tough image on the outside. They're always there to have money sucked out of them. And I say money sucked out of them because people know who to go to if they want money. They're going to go to the people that will buy the sob stories. I mean, like, I'll throw one out there. Like, my mom. My mom, I thought I thought she was a killer, actually. My mom, she, she was mean to me. But my mom has, like, one of the biggest hearts ever. I mean, you know, never seen her cry, nothing like that. Uh, you know, grew up from the inner city of Detroit, bad areas and stuff like that. So I just thought, I thought she was super one, you know. But... But and then I realized every time it was a problem, they always came to my mom, not because my mom had the most money or anything like that. It was because my mom didn't have the willingness to say no. And she would always go and help. And then it, you know, it's byproducts of that. And I always ask that if you're here, to, if you always helping everybody else, who's going to be there to help you when you're in need? And it's gonna be the same people, the same people that asked you all these years for your your funds and things like that. They won't be there nowhere to help you. So uh that that was a big a big push in my life. Uh once I noticed that at a younger age, that um it has it court it coincides with each other. And I'm hearing some noise in the background, so I'm about to go beat up this kid. But besides that, besides that, I look what you got on there. No, it uh, it made me think of my mom too, cause uh, I had a conversation with her one time, and she said, um, cause it it was about me not willing to give money out. Like I'm very uh hard to get money out now. From like, if something happens to like one of the cousins or whatever, I'm, I'm like, all right, what's the problem? Why can't they afford it? Have they tried selling something? She's like, you're so evil. <laughs> And so then it'll get to the point where uh, she'll be like, you know, Alex, this is why you'll die rich and I'll die poor. <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But it's, uh, you know, it's the way you have to, the way people should look at it. Because I see people uh, like at work, uh, say, or they're rooming with someone and that roommate can't come up with their half of the bills. And then they come up with the other half. I understand rent has to be paid, but at some point that person's going to continue to take advantage of you. And what? that's how it is in all situations where you're giving money to someone. If 
if they see that they can take advantage of you and your money, more than likely, more likely than not, they're going to continue that pattern. And Wait, so, let me stop you right there. It's not more likely than not. If they see they can take advantage of you, they coming back to take advantage of you again. Don't no <laughs> shoot code for them. Don't shoot code for They're going to do it again. And I mean, in that situation, if someone asks you for money, if someone asks me for money, I always ask them why, you know, it, it's, it's not, it should never be a matter of just like, yeah, how much would you sell? What's your cash app? It's why do they need money? If, is it, actually serious you know have they done everything they can to avoid having to go to somebody to ask for money i've never had to ask somebody for money and why have i not because i've been in control of my finances I, not there's not many people here in the u.s you know saying hey my you know i have a kid held for ransom or something you know that there's not right. crazy anomalies that happen in the u.s for someone to really need money not not majority of the time so it's a matter of I question people, you know, on their finances when they come to me, because what are what sacrifices are they making uh, in order to, you know, that are that are different from from mine, basically? Why should right. I be sacrificing for them? All right. And um, and before the hate mail start coming, we're not saying bad times don't happen. And if you follow this channel for longer today, the only thing that we say is the only thing that's guaranteed to happen is something bad. We're not saying that it's not okay to help somebody that's in need. But we are questioning what people consider a need and a want. Because for the life of me, me, I'm only speaking for myself. Alex, different story. But me, me, if I see you stunting it up on social media, you know, Facebook, IG, all this stuff, like you living a life in a lap of luxury. I don't care if you front for Instagram or front for the people, and then you call me, which happens a lot, and then you call me and ask for money, the answer is 99.999% of the time is going to be no. How about go sell those Jordans? You got you got an iPhone and you hungry? How about you eat the apple off the back of the iPhone? <laughs> you have to... <laughs> <laughs> you have to you have to make sacrifices before you come to me. Yeah. That's just really how I look at it. You have to make sacrifice because that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make sacrifice before I call you and ask you for something. It's what have I did to come up with this before just calling and saying, Oh, I know they got it, so let me just call them and ask for it. What sacrifices am I willing to do? And that's that's the difference between and I hold everybody to the same standard I hold myself. I don't think it's it's not just, oh, convenience. Oh, I need $100. Oh, let me call Alex. The first thing I'm going to do is look around before I call somebody, because probably I got pride, is, okay, what's sitting around this house that I can sell to make $100 real quick if I just need $100? You know, another pet peeve of mine is you see people, family, friends, stuff, they go on vacation. They go on vacation, and then they come, the day they come back on vacation, they call the actual money. Oh, my life's about to get cut off. You knew your life's about to get cut off before you even went on a vacation. So you should have not went on a vacation and took care of your life. Really. But I can't help you there either. Because, and that's why we had this video about emotions are the thing that make people broke. Because I'm going to look at everything logically. You can't call me with anything and say, oh, I need money. And then come with some emotional sob story. Now, I know truth from BS. And I will help out people that's truly in need. But 90% of the people that call and ask for something, they made no sacrifices to come up with the money themselves. They just say, oh, I'll just ask them for the money. I'll call Kirby, ask him for the money. He could pay and I can keep living my good life. And then when my check come uh, two weeks from now, then I'll just give him back that money and then go on. No. And um, I think my wife told me this. You don't give out money. Uh, you don't let people borrow money. Uh, it looks it's, it was something like this. Uh, when people ask you to borrow money, when you give it away, you give it away and expect and expect it like you're not going to get it back. I'm not in that time. I'm not in that mindset to be like, oh, I'm not expecting it back. So I'm just gonna keep everything until somebody <laughs> come with the, come with the, uh, a good enough reason. And again. 
some people do have problems. Have I helped people? Yes. And I don't have to broadcast it and put it on Facebook and say, yeah, I just had to help my cousins see low, you know, and then have everybody give me gratification on social media and stuff like that. But I'm not going to sit there and let people think that they can keep continue to do do the nonsense in their life and think that I'm their bailout plan. I'm not the federal government. I am not. I'm not the Bush administration, the Obama administration that's going to give out stimulus checks. I'm not that. If you got an issue, call them. But don't call me thinking the sob story is going to work on me. Because they don't. I got kids and they're crazy. And this is where my money goes. The other thing, too, like uh, another reason I, I deny giving people money is like everyone that knows me knows that they can come to me and ask me for advice or uh, ask me what I know on investing or how to make money or how to budget or whatever. They know they can come to me for some kind of financial coaching, right? And right. I can give them knowledge to lead them on the path that I'm on. But rather than them taking that because they don't want to make the sacrifice to do that, they would rather just have a handout. And that that's another thing. I That's they, probably my best. And the thing is, they don't understand the knowledge that you're giving them will make them more money than that, you know, 120 bucks that they asked you for. It will continue to make, make them money over and over and over again. But Exactly. They don't want. To, they don't want to go through that process. They just and I mean, some people just don't have no pride. <laughs> but the thing is, the people that always get caught is the people that's always emotional. Like, oh, it's a charity for this. Oh, it's a dog. Oh, it's this. Yeah. Oh, their mama's sick. Oh, no, no, because all the time you're giving out, not one of those charities you're giving out to is going to come reciprocate that back. And I always look at what is my return on investment for giving out anything. I monitor my money like I monitor my kids all the time. All the time. I don't want my kids out of the street, so I'm not putting my money out in the street. Just letting somebody just run really nilly with it. Because, you know, everybody's good at paying back until they're not. And I'm just, I'll probably never mentally be in a position to just be like, no. I mean, do I give away money and I know people can't pay back? Yeah. But... I'm not falling for the okie doke or the sob stories that people did. And and uh, uh, like I said, the baseline of that is I seen it a lot growing up. You know, I seen it when I say a lot, way more than I should have growing up. People coming, you know, coming to my mom with the sob stories and my mom with a big heart always helped, always helped, always helped. But when my mom was in need, those same people wasn't in sight. And I'm not talking about five dollars for gas money. I'm talking Lots of money where she helped and, you know, helped, 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 helped. And those people was never in a position to help at all. And, you know, probably half of them never even paid the money back in the first place. And I wasn't replicating that lifestyle no matter what. But, you know, emotions, emotion is a big driver for why people can't hold on to money. It's because everybody's going to give them a sob story. And the people who don't have it and think emotionally and not logically are the people that's without it. The logic people are the people that hold on to it. And you can follow the Elon Musk. I mean, anybody that you consider wealthy. I'm not talking about athletes. I'm talking about that's actually built well. Um, you see that they're logical thinkers all the time. You don't see them, you know, oh, emotional about a certain topic or something like that. They're pragmatic. They're on purpose, on time, and logical thinkers about everything. Like if it's a cause, like you know, let's say wounded warriors, for instance, if they truly support the troop, they want to support the troops, they will do something because they want to do it. There's not an emotional heartstring getting pulled at that time. It's logical thinking the whole time, and logical thinking is what leads to success, not the emotional. Oh, I feel this way. I don't go in no deal talking about what I feel. Right. It comes down to bare bones of logic numbers and that's it if it don't work if it don't work it don't work i don't care if and i'm being honest i don't care if the person i'm trying to buy the business from say oh my my uh my kidney about to fall out of my back right now well you gotta find somebody because i'm not doing it. i'm just not doing it oh, i have a go for me page but this guy ain't doing it yet. 
<laughs> if the numbers don't work. I'm just being honest. That's how I look at it. Well, guys, with all that being said, uh, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you guys in the next video.